All right, welcome back to Last Call. If you are just tuning in, we are not in studio. We are live from New York's new landmark, Tin Building, but we are also talking all about the American economy. Major flashpoint right now, you know, is housing, residential, and also commercial real estate. And the, the big issue with commercial real estate, or one of, is kind of hollowed out downtowns with high vacancy rates in certain areas. And Castle Systems, which tracks people swiping in and out of buildings, puts out a list of the cities with the highest and lowest weekday occupancy rates in office building, the lowest five of the major metros, New York right here, DC, San Francisco, Philadelphia, and the lowest return to office, San Jose, right? Silicon Valley, Tech Central. But even as commercial goes down in parts of America, residential, particularly rents, are still strong or even going higher. Case in point, right here, New York and get ready to sit down or stand up if you're seated. The rent on an average Manhattan apartment is now 5,588 bucks a month. A two or three bedroom apartment, you know, you got a family, a couple of kids, a couple of dogs, whatever, can easily be more than $10,000 per month in Manhattan. Let's talk now about both sides of the real estate market. We got our friend Don Peebles, Founder, Chairman, and CEO of the People's Corporation, major developer, and Best Friedman CEO, Brown Harris Stevens. Uh, welcome. Thanks for both schlepping, I think that's the appropriate New York term, down here. Best, first start to you. I mean, okay, for our viewers and listeners in Ohio or Dallas, they just fell over. They can't imagine these prices for like a box. How much higher? can rents or real estate go in New York? I mean, I think it's a bit of, of an enigma to everyone that the prices have, the velocity and the prices have gone up, up, up. And part of that has to do with the fact that potential buyers have sat out because rates have been high. And I think that's put a lot of strain on inventory. But last time I spoke to you, we were talking about how high the rents were and yeah. they just keep going up. I think eventually it's going to cool off, but I can't, I wish I could tell you when. I can't macro and, and, forecast. And higher interest rates haven't seemed to matter. Nothing has seemed I, to matter. I know. It's a, it's put a lot of stress. There's enormous frustration. Talk to a lot of friends and family and clients who are very upset and frustrated with the market. There's not a lot of inventory out there. And what is out there is expensive and there's a lot of competition for it. But it's New York City, which is an outlier. The rest of the country, we're seeing a little bit of slowing down and things are starting to shift a bit. I think that will happen happen in New York, but it's going to take a little bit of time. And remember, it's seasonal too, Brian. Remember, this is the best time for the rental market. The summer months are when 80% of leases get signed. So that also plays into this a little bit. So if you're going to lease, maybe now is not. That's exactly, that's a very important point. <laughs> well, if you have to, you have to, I guess. You know what I do? It's all about location, 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 Don. And I think that's so true. Listen, Manhattan, right? It's not perfect, but I feel like New York City has really come back. I've traveled probably like you have all over the country the last two years. New York City feels vibrant. Look where we are, it's packed. D.C., not so much. You got a lot of properties in D.C. Uh, I know President Biden has been, there was an Axios report. It's gonna mandate people back to the office five days a week. Do you support that? Absolutely, I think, well, first of all, Washington, D.C. Is, is at a high risk of almost being destroyed as a city. If people don't come back to work, I mean, D.C. is a federal city. It relies very heavily on the presence of the federal government and federal government employees. Um, so I think that the right move is getting federal government employees back to work. They should have been back to work a year ago, at least. Um, and New York has gotten stronger for a number of reasons. It's supply constrained. No real meaningfully new increases in inventory on the rental side um, since COVID. And so there's a supply shortage, there's a much greater demand, and people are priced out of the housing market and um, you know, residential condo prices and co-op prices have declined yeah. significantly. And so you're, I think New York, on the rental side, I think rents are gonna keep going up. I I don't quote me on the number, because I'm trying to go from memory on the Castle data. I think on Fridays, DC has under 25% office occupancy. And I know a lot of our viewers, I got friends watching that live out in Vienna and Falls Church, and they're like, I don't wanna go back, I don't wanna take the metro, traffic sucks, whatever it may be, but there's a lot of small businesses also being cratered. Yeah, they've been destroyed because they rely on the, the freak influx of people coming to work each day. I mean, New York City's the same. It relied on two million plus people to come visit Manhattan every day to come here and work. Same thing in Washington, D.C., in fact, even more so. Tourism has been down. That's beginning to pick up a bit. D.C. also has a public safety issue that is discouraging but tourism. But that's lack of people, that's too. That's I mean, when, yes. there's, when there's no one around, right. you feel unsafe. Yes. 
what, you know, safety in numbers. Yeah. It's not hard. I, this yeah. is not genius. I'm, no, of course, no, I don't think either of us is a former police chief. No. But this is not like no, Einstein level that's stuff. That's right. It's yeah. common I think sense. New York's gotten safer. Um, one from political policies. I think Mayor Adams has done a good job in terms of public that's safety. Right. But also, people are back in New York. New York's active. New York's busy. In fact, New York is cleaner than I've seen it in years. Uh, so DC has to clean up. They've got to get people back to work. But then look, we just closed on a on a land acquisition and development loan in Charlotte, North Carolina last week to build six apartment buildings and and, and a hotel um, in downtown and what's called Uptown in Charlotte. The market's doing exceptionally well in Charlotte. Uptown Florida. is the downtown. Uptown in Charlotte. is, the is downtown. in Charlotte. Exactly. By the way, exactly. greatest YMCA I've ever been to was in Charlotte. <laughs> it's like at the top of the Omni Hotel or something. Anyway, 90% of our CPI data today, Bess, yeah. 90% of the raise was shelter, sure. which is that. a fancy word for where you have to live. Right. Is there? Can you give? Can you give people out there some some optimism? Because this is if you're a 29 year old recently married trying to you know buy your first house it's insane it's overwhelming it really is and and i think that some of the data that we're seeing there's a lag so you have to keep that in mind and i do think that it's going to take a little bit of time the good news is that inflation has come down tremendously thanks to the red the fed hikes that's been very good and i think you're seeing consumers out there there's good spending optimism is better we're not going to have a recession it looks like that's what but seven percent interest rates have not seemed to do anything to residential housing i'm not picking on any homes i looked it up i was trying to find an example i went to a town i lived in as a kid encinitas california about 20 miles north of san diego literally just went on zillow found a random house it was 1.1 million dollars yeah. it had sold in february for 900 thousand. As far as i could tell not a lot of improvements were made right and it's three bedrooms and two baths yeah. i mean and it's I, not on the water. It, it, it's crazy. I mean, that, that the housing market has been, I mean, look, during the pandemic, we saw it really impacted, and now we've seen this resurgence. But at some point, the trees can't grow to the sky, and I think things will, you know, hopefully start to teeter off a little bit. New York is tough. New York yeah, look, is tough. I mean, all the, I mean, look, Florida and other markets were having 30, 35 percent appreciation annually. That was heavily driven on interest rates. Most Americans get a mortgage on their home. They're yeah. concerned about a payment, not necessarily the price of yeah. the property. What can I afford? And every so month? now, yeah. as pay interest rates go up, prices start slowing down. So you're not seeing as much price growth, but interest rates have made payments go up. When I bought my first home in 1987, my interest rate was 9%. When I was doing my first development deal, I paid 9.5% for a construction loan. Our business is efficient. Yeah. People will adjust, but interest rates are going to be higher for a long time. And this generation yeah. is used to cheap money. They're not used to rates being uh, this high. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, you know, that's you buried part. the lead, Bess. That's We're it. all out of free money. Free and super it's, cheap money. That's, that's it. It's over. You're Those paying. You're are... buying that fish is on you tonight. We're uh, gonna whatever. For everybody. I'm that's treating fish it eats lobsters apparently it has sharp teeth it's got to come with a lemon pizza though that's spectacular that's, Don, that's best so thing. good all right up next